Willkommen to Bad Shit. A frank and funny look at the mental illness. While we will touch on several illnesses, Bad Shit is focused on those along the spectrum of bipolar disorders. Uh, I'm your host, Adam. I am your other host, Brad. And we're both bipolar. <laughs> so strap in and let's see how bad shit we really are. A spoiler alert. Pretty damn bad shit. Oh. Jesus Christ. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> for anyone listening and not watching, we're not, we're not European. We're not Slavic. I know that amazing <laughs> German-ish yeah. accent we just did. Was my, it, wasn't that just amazing? It was. It, it was, was spot. You would have thought we were... <laughs> We were from Munich. <laughs> we were from Munich. Was that, yeah, I guess we were kind of like a German. I don't know I don't what that know. was. I don't, I don't know. know. What are we talking about? Uh, bipolar blackouts. Bipolar, this is uh, memory gaps uh, for you folks um, who are unfamiliar with that term, as I was unfamiliar with that term, bipolar blackout. Yeah, I just came across that recently uh, reading a lot about memory and bipolar because everybody we've talked to about bipolar we were uh recently uh john from emo dojo mm -hmm. interviewed us for the podcast jive yeah. and he talked about memory loss yeah that he'd experienced and it's not something that comes up in the diagnostic criteria for bipolar yeah it's not something uh that typically when you look up videos about bipolar or you're reading articles about bipolar it doesn't come up unless you specifically search for bipolar and memory problems or memory loss and uh, I started doing that and reading a lot about it. And it's apparently pretty common. And uh, that's one of the terms for it is bipolar blackouts. Mm. Now, do you experience more bipolar blackouts during your manic phases or your depressive phases? More during my manic phases. Really? Okay. I, I do, during depressive phases, um, have some memory gaps. Mm-hmm. But when you're depressed, half of what you're doing is just like laying around on the couch all day. So it's like not much to think about. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's true. Like, like, oh, I forgot what happened between one and two, but I know I didn't get off the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing big must have happened during one and two. Yeah. Whereas when you're manic, it's just like suddenly you find yourself at Target and you're like, when did I get here? Yeah. What the fuck did I do the rest of the <laughs> What am day? I supposed to be buying right now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, it, it's funny. So I'm an actor. So memorization is important, like memorizing lines and that type of thing, uh, forming a concrete character and remembering what their uh, journey has been in order to better portray them on screen. Arch, arch it, arch it, arch it. Um, so I'm actually really good at memorizing lines. Um, but at the same time, I have these gaps in my memory and I know what I was doing. You know, just like you were saying, you remember being on the couch from one to two, but there's no details for me. There's none. Yeah. It's like there might, or there might be a flash of a detail for me. And, and I don't a hundred percent know why. And the, the fact that it's associated with bipolar is in and of itself. Um, I don't want to say it's comforting cause it's not comforting, but to be able to, put a label on it right is good yeah. but it, or, or feels good yeah it's interesting like you know i use the example of just like finding myself at target mm -hmm. it's weird because i i always say it's it's like when you drive to the same office every day mm -hmm. and you get to the point where you just zone out on the drive and you don't remember the drive right and you just you're like oh i'm at work um that it feels like that to me like i don't get freaked out that i'm at target I'm not like, oh my God, I thought I was at home. Right, exactly. Like, I'll just be shopping. And then I'm like, I stop and I go, when did I get here? Yeah. What was going, what else did I do today? Yeah, because, you know, that's one thing I will say about the idea of like bipolar blackouts. Because when I think of the term blackout, I think of kind of like you're time traveling. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's just that like you just lost time. You lost time. I yeah. don't feel like with a bipolar, when you have a bipolar blackout, that you're losing time. Well, what I've read is that because of all the chemical mumbo jumbo that's going on in your brain, that's the technical term, by the way. Chemistry. Mumbo jumbo. Mumbo jumbo. <laughs> uh, when you're in a manic and depressed state, that what it is is that your brain can't form memories sometimes. Well, yeah. Yes. Keep yeah. going. Sorry. Keep going. So it's not that you black out, right. and which is why you don't typically freak out immediately when you find yourself at Target or right. whatever. It's that your brain just was incapable of forming memories throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I talked to my psychologist about this. I was in therapy, and I was mentioning how, like, I don't have a lot of memories from childhood. 
I I know I had a childhood. I can remember, you know, like where I went to school and who some of my friends were, but I don't have a lot of specific memories from childhood. Now, meanwhile, I'll sit with Mandy on the couch and she'll be like, I remember when I was 16, I went to this basketball camp and I'm like, wow, I don't have any details. I'm like the same that. way. I don't, I, there's very little I remember from my childhood and then especially high school. Yeah. And it's so weird because, you know, I'm, I'm from East Tennessee. It's not a big, big place where I'm from and I go back and I'll run into somebody I went to high school with and they'll start ticking off. Yeah. They'll start ticking off all this shit. And I'm like, I don't remember anything you're talking about. Yeah. Well, so I bring up talking to my psychologist about it because he mentioned how, if you don't have a strong emotional reaction to an event, sometimes it's harder to remember it because your brain's like, well, I don't have room for that. It, It obviously was not, important it didn't elicit elicit a certain reaction from you so therefore it's not that important chuck it to the side don't form a lot of <laughs> so i i had no emotional attachment to anything during high school I, well, <laughs> there I, was four years well, where i was like <laughs> but see here's the thing for me <laughs> i like that i, I, like I will that. say this like <laughs> i spent a lot of my childhood in what i would consider a depressive state in that i was isolating I was reading for extended periods of time. I didn't have a lot of close friends. Um, even though I was physically active, like that didn't form a lot of community for me. Um, so it, I can understand that. I can understand the idea that it's like, you know, wh- who cares about grade school? I don't remember anything about grade school because I didn't form any relationships then. I didn't have any major moments in my life that triggered you know what I mean? I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I, it, I don't know a hundred percent if that's what's going on with me. I did think that was an interesting perspective and a different, an interesting thing to consider. Yeah. You know, because it. Th- they say that I don't remember where I read this. It's like we are able to have one hundred people in our lives at a time, like in terms of mm. being able to kind of keep track of and care about and uh, interact with about a hundred people at a time. Right. And so that takes in consideration your family, your friends, but also your coworkers, right. It takes into consideration um, ancillary people that you might have in your life. Like let's say you're taking a dance class and the teacher is there or there's other people in your classroom. So that's what you can process at a time. And then after that point, like you've kind of reached critical mass and you're not going to be as likely to form relationships without sacrificing other ones. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, and I read that somewhere. I'm like, that's a, again, I'm not touting that as science. I just think that's a really interesting way of looking at it because I know when I form new friendships, old friendships tend to fall by the wayside. Yeah. Right. And the well, you only have so much time in a week. Right. And you can make the argument that, like, well, I have more in common with these new friends than these old friends because new Adam is friends with these new people who are into new things. Right. Yeah. But that's, I mean, I don't 100% buy that because you made an emotional connection with this person, you know, these, these friends of yours from high school, college, before the before time. Uh, you, you, you can't tell me that. All of that connectivity is just gone, right? Yeah. I think that's one of those things when you, you know, people will talk about like, oh, I haven't talked to this friend in years and we just picked up right where we left off. Right. Yeah. Um, It's interesting. It is interesting. I mean, we do only have the capacity. I would very much agree with that too. I I would even shrink it. I think 100 is big. Well, I I say 100 – because those aren't all close relationships. Right. That right. includes people you work with. Right. Like at like, my office right yeah. now, I have 20 people that I work with. Yeah. And that's 20 people on the list. And it's yeah. not because I'm close with any of them. It's because I got to be like, oh, right. Yeah. Edwin's got a daughter who's in high school. Oh, and then, you know, um, Jake is a big fan of scotch and he drinks. You know what I mean? Like it's those things, those little tidbits that you remember about people because they're actively in your life. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I wonder, because there's also talk about memory gaps occurring when trauma occurs. 
right? Yeah. Like something traumatic happens to you and you, your brain protects you is Lor- the way of putting Lauren it. Lauren right? Melisi talked about that mm-hmm. on our borderline personality disorder episode. Right. Some of the trauma she experienced, she's blocked out years. Right, because it's protecting. She's protecting yeah. herself. Her brain is doing the work to protect her. And I, I wonder if it's like that with us in a way, is that there's a part of you, you know, I always say that I feel like being manic is like a different personality has come out. Right. And it's not multiple personalities. No, 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 no. Any of you who are listening and don't have bipolar, that's not what's going on. No. But that's what it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. To a great extent. Yeah. Because there's like two different parts of you. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so I wonder, you're doing all this crazy, horrible shit while you're manic. And I wonder if there's a part of your brain that that does that is like as a protective mechanism, it's like, Oh, this is, this is a form of trauma. Mm. Let's just not remember this. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, well, and you know what else is messed up about that is everyone's definition of trauma is different. Right. Right. Because you sit there and you're like, um, Adam, you can't remember your childhood. What happened to you in your childhood? Right. You know what I mean? Should we do hypnotherapy? <laughs> exactly. and, They're like really dive yeah. deep. I don't think I had that traumatic a childhood, yeah. at least what I think of as a traumatic childhood, because you hear horror stories. Like, I was in high school when the whole Catholic priest touching altar boys thing really hit the newspapers. Like, do you remember that? How, like, the the popes and the Roman Catholic Church were just kind of shuffling priests around, like, all that crazy crap. And I'm sitting there going, God, that must have been so traumatic for those altar boys. And and I'm going, well, I, I know that didn't happen to me, but... That's what I associate with trauma. I don't associate right. whatever happened to me as trauma. Right. And that... When the, it's all relative. Right, and that's like just that's, it. You know, we get in this uh, um, kind of comparative game. Right, it's the, yes. You know, I think we talked about this when we were on uh, the Jive podcast yep. with John from Emo Dojo. But this idea that it's like, like, oh, I broke my leg. But that guy over there had a leg amputated. And then that guy lost two legs to a landmine in Afghanistan. Right. I shouldn't complain about my broken leg. Right. And it's like, but you're still in miserable pain and can't walk. Yeah. And, and you, <laughs> you, know? you start normalizing it. Yeah. You normalize it. The number of people I met when I was in, like, college that were like, oh, I had a job in high school. You know, I started working when I was, like, 17. And it was just to make some extra money so I could go to the movies and buy uh, you know, a new shirt or whatever. And I was like, I, I started caddying at the age of 10 and I've worked ever since in some facet or another. And they were like, what, why would you, what were you like, was, were you being forced to by your parents? Like, did you have to pay them? Like, no, no, no. It's just different yeah. life experience, different expectation, different, um, um, reality. Yeah. Right. So it, it's it's the same idea with this trauma. It's like, well, I mean, that wasn't trauma to me working like that. Or maybe it was. I don't know. See, that's just it. Right. Like, I can't pinpoint what what is causing me not to remember this stuff. Yeah, it's so difficult. And you, there's also a concept when you you talk about trauma um, that was introduced to me recently is that you can deal with the event. Mm-hmm. Right. You can be like, I'm okay with that event. No, whatever caused accident, the trauma. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the trauma itself still exists in your brain. Oh. You know? Oh, like a, kind of like a residual, uh, like a, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah, a, yeah. like a, a scar, a basically. Scar. There you go. You scar. Know? That's Think a good way it that way. It. It's like it heals, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the scar is still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like I've, when your dog pees on the carpet, uh, you know, you can clean up the pee. It but it still smells, smells. like pee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It still yeah. smells. Um. I don't know why I thought of this. There was this girl once <laughs> just talking about smells. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, 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 I got in her car one day. Very, very, very pretty girl. And, uh, you know, we were kind of flirting and stuff. And I got in her car and I was like, do you eat, do you eat crystal burgers today? And she was like, no. And I was like, it smells like onions. And I was like, oh, shit, it's her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've definitely experienced. Yeah, I've definitely been in cars like that. Yeah, it was um, like, oh, but you're so hot. <laughs> um, you smell like onions. Anyway, just a tangent on smells. Yeah. Uh, 
The but more you know. That's interesting about the like the idea of the trauma causing a scar, which makes complete sense if you frame it in what we consider to be drastic trauma. Like right. for instance, going back to the whole uh, priest altar boy situation, like clearly when it comes to sexual relationships, those kids had crazy trauma that I'm sure lasted into their adulthood. Probably they're still right. dealing Even with Even if they it. dealt with the event. Right. With the event of, you itself. know, itself. Like, yeah. It, yeah. Does, it doesn't matter. There's the residual effect of the traumatic event. Yeah. You know, it's like, you mentioned at one point, I can't remember what episode it was on. Oh, it was Maggie Gwynn. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the PT, uh, the uh, postpartum episode. You talked about how uh, your wife was in a car accident. Yeah. And to this day, and like, I'm, I don't know, but I assume Shannon's not suffering from any lingering physical damage from no, that car accident, no. but she still has visceral reactions when she's in a car because she still has that scarred, uh, that trauma, that trauma scar. Yeah. Trauma scar. Yeah. Ooh, we, we should make a t-shirt. Trauma, trauma scar. scar. I have a trauma scar. That sounds like a band. <laughs> it, oh, trauma scar. We should start a punk band called Trauma, trauma scar. <laughs> I think Brad would look great with a mohawk. I yeah, think that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. get the yeah. sleeveless uh, denim uh, fucking vest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ropes. Hey, friends. Brad and I started Batshit because we needed someone to talk to about our bipolar. So, when looking for a sponsor, BetterHelp was the obvious choice. BetterHelp provides access to therapists via text, via Zoom, via email, via phone call, 24 hours, seven days a week. I don't need to tell anyone how broken the American healthcare system is, especially when it comes to mental illness. But the beautiful thing about BetterHelp is that they'll work with you. Go to www.betterhelp.com backslash batshit. You'll get 10% off for the first month and you'll get someone to talk to right now. If you need to talk to someone, do it. Please. We love you. Thanks for listening. Help us continue the conversation. Leave us a comment with your thoughts, experiences, or questions about mental health. Every opinion and viewpoint is valid. Just don't be a dick. Yeah, you know, um, uh, I was talking to someone recently about, uh, you know, dealing with all that shit with my mother, Mm -hmm. right? And that was something that they had pointed out to me that I hadn't thought about before is I was like, yeah, you know, I finally dealt with that. And they were like, yeah, but the trauma is still there and you have to deal with the trauma. Right, um, it's it's not gone. Yeah, it's not, and, and that's. Uh, it's, so now, let me ask you this, okay? Uh-huh. You go to therapy. Yeah. Let's say you really dive into your, you know, your issues with your mother, right, and the whole, the birth, the event, all of it. Yeah, which I have. Which you have. So, but you still have that trauma, even if you're addressing yeah. the trauma. Yeah, I and mean, I finally feel like I I got past the event i don't think that way anymore like i feel like i healed from it but there's still there's still a lot of lingering things in my personality over it right you know and and, in additional therapy do you think you can treat some of that with additional therapy yeah i think so yeah uh you know there there are therapists who specialize in trauma Mm -hmm. and trauma response right um and there are certain types of therapies um you know uh it's interesting getting into the different type of therapy. You know, right. we think of therapy as just this one size fits all thing. You, and it's not. It's just like a therapist, right? Like yeah. you may not jive with a certain type of therapy. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, uh Rebecca Stevens talked about that when she was on. Mm-hmm. You know, is that as a therapist, sometimes she and a client don't jive. Yeah. And they need to find another therapist. And that's okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and that's fine. Yeah. But it, it, it's you know, it, I love the I love titling it a trauma scar Mm -hmm. because I have scars on my body that, you know, I've gotten from various injuries over the years. They've never fully gone away. They won't, they won't, they won't ever go away. It doesn't matter how much, you know, how, how well I healed. It doesn't matter how much vitamin E I rub on the scar. You know what I mean? It's still there. It's still a part of me. It still marks me as someone who has gone through something. And yeah. it, it, it can be drastic, it can be minor, but it still leaves a scar. It still leaves it, but it can also go the other way. Like, there are people, I'm sure, in your life that have left their own scar on you in a positive light. Do you know what I mean? Like, There's a, uh, there's a Chuck Palahniuk quote that I love, 
and uh, I'll probably butcher it here, but he, but he, it's basically like um, we remember pain so much easier than we remember um, happiness mm-hmm. uh, because there's no scar for for uh, there's no scar for sweetness. Oh, that's interesting. No, like that. a scar for sweetness. I like yeah. that. But but at the same time, that being said, like there's that 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 old adage of like you always remember your first love, right? Because there is that chemical reaction in your brain that triggers when you meet someone who you're really attracted to or you really click with or whatever. And, and then they fuck you up. And of course, yeah, well, maybe they <laughs> fuck you up, but uh, or you may, or you may have fucked them up. You still remember them. I still remember, like, my first love. My first love was kindergarten. Wow, kindergarten? Kindergarten. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit this. I don't know if you listen. Uh, 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 Joni. Oh, Joni. That's so cute. Yeah, we played doctor in kindergarten. Oh, boy. Not, not like <laughs> okay, doctor, all right, doctor. All right, all right. <laughs> oh. Just like, like the stethoscope. I get it. I get stethoscope it. Stethoscope doctor. Yeah. Yeah. And I immediately had a crush on her. Aw. And I was such a chicken shit mm-hmm. about it. I remember I wrote her a love note at one point in, uh, like, I don't know, in, like, fifth grade or something. Yeah. And I uh, didn't sign it and put it in her desk, and she thought somebody else wrote it, and Aww. I just didn't say anything. Oh, <laughs> Brad. Oh, Brad. Little kid Brad. Oh, I see that. <laughs> My first love was Christine. I remember Christine. Uh, this was in high school, and it was I, – I, I thought she was so beautiful. Like, And I'd never talked with a girl – where we clicked and our sense of humor was very similar and um, like our outlook on life and our views of certain yeah. things, like it just, just clicked. And I fucked that up royally, like yeah. royally fucked that up. Um, but, but like, I, I will never forget Christine. Now that being said, since Christine, I've dated a number of women, um, uh, a number of women. And, uh, this is awful to say. I, I can't like I can't put events to some of them. I I can't remember some of them. Yeah. Like like if I sit down and I actively try to remember like okay let me go through my series of like yeah chicks I dated. Uh, I'm always like I know there was a girl around this point right and I don't remember who they are right and that, <laughs> and, that, and that has nothing to do with how awesome these people were because. Clearly, I mean, they dated us. They must have been pretty awesome. Yeah. No, uh, but <laughs> but yeah, it's I, there are there are, like I don't know, I don't know, and I I laughed because I've talked with like the older generation, like my my grandfather is a great example. I've mentioned this before. He came back from the war, met my grandmother at the Lindy Hop, got married, yeah. and like those are the people he he remembers these people because they're. I don't know if it's because there weren't many or he had this chemical reaction based off of my grandmother and therefore, boom, that's it. I got it. Locked it down. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but, but we have had these chemical reactions several times. Some have fired. Obviously, they burn brighter than others. Like you remember Joni, but maybe you don't remember a couple of girls in your 20s or your late teens, you know? Yeah. I didn't, I, and that's really, that's really painful to say for me because – Again, this is the shame you feel with the disease. Is like I am not a bad person. I didn't like. I didn't actively choose to like, like forget this woman. Yeah. I did. I, I wasn't like trying to hit it and quit it. Moving but, on, just another name and you know, notch in the bed. Well, but that's exactly the thing is you were probably manic. Yeah. Because you, you again, you get the hypersexuality, you're extra charming. Like that's one of the things, I mean, just to be blunt, like I try sometimes, I'll be like, like, can I think of every woman I've ever slept with? Sure. And I can't. No. Nope. Because some of them are just gone. They're not in my yeah. head. Yeah. They're just not in my head. And then that does not speak to you, uh, the, the women we can't remember. And we'll maybe never, some of them. Well, maybe some. But it doesn't matter. You'll never know which ones you are because we'll never say all your names. Yeah, um, because we won't remember them. Because we don't them. know them. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. We are bad people. Oh, no, Jesus. we're not bad people. We're not bad people. It's a symptom. It's a symptom. We're God sick, damn it. and it's a symptom. God damn it. I, 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 I've, never, I've never hurt anyone. Like, mm-hmm. I've never Like, actively, physically hurt? Obviously, that. Yeah. But I have also never uh, actively, like, people have that whole idea. I only of, hurt like, lamps. Like, <laughs> 
Didn't we have someone write in that was like, I hate lamps, and I was yeah, like, yeah. break the lamp, yeah, go for it. <laughs> Hire me, yeah, I'll take care of your lamps. <laughs> but no, it's, it, it, it's like, I, I've <laughs> never sought out, like, you know how you have that, there, there are guys, I knew them in college, that were like, I'm just going to sleep with, you know, I'm to, tonight, I don't care who I sleep with, I'm going to sleep with that person. Yeah. And like, they didn't care. They didn't care. I will say this, I never not cared. Yeah, when I was, when I'm manic, uh, it's always still looking for a connection. Yes, it's always a connection. It's yeah. always trying to to be with someone, to find someone who understands you in that right. moment, who's going to be on your level. Right. Like it's it's it. it and and the kind of uh, the movie logic that sure. you have when you're manic. Sure. Is it's like like even if you're not feeling like a like the, they don't have the same sense of humor as you or whatever, mm -hmm. there's still this thing in your mind where it's like like well you know when we sleep together it may be magical yeah you know yeah um, and I think that's one of the areas where the memory gaps become this the most frightening mm. is that you sleep with people and you don't remember it yeah that's fucking terrifying while you're manic it's um, fucking terrifying and as terrifying as that is for a man imagine being a woman yeah no i can't and dealing with that I can't. you know they have such a higher risk of stds you've you've got risk of pregnancy, pregnancy yeah dude. um I, not, and, yeah I, and, and i mean we're not meaning to spend this whole podcast just talking about like the women we can't remember um but it it is an interesting tangent that we got off on because that is such a fundamental part of being a human being is interpersonal connection it connectivity yeah. right and when you don't remember and that. when you don't remember the connections you've made if you don't remember these people who at this point in time in your life were super important they were everything to you yeah they were everything to you and now you can't remember them yeah like that's I'm still wrapping my head around that because I can remember random people from like junior high. You know what I mean? Like I, I remember this, uh, this, there was this girl named Bobby Sue. There was this dude named Jason. There was another guy named John. And I wasn't friends with any of these people. Uh, I wasn't attracted to Bobby Sue, for instance. Um, she's a lovely person. It just wasn't. Um, so it's like, why can I remember them? Like even even like a clear mental image of them, but then there are these other people that I supposedly had this really intense connection with that I can't. You can't remember. I can't remember. Yeah, it, because because you're romantic. It fucking kills me. It kills yeah. me. It like and, and this is going back to, you know, that morality thing that we've talked about in the past. It's like now all of a sudden you're hating yourself and you're a yeah. bad person because you can't remember these people and you know. right, right. You feel like you're you're some like douchebag fraternity right. Lothario. Yeah. Um, Ooh, Lothario. Yeah, that was a, that was a good you. word. You like that? Yeah, I love Lothario. that word. I've never <laughs> used it. I don't think I've ever used it in a sentence. <laughs> New goal. Keep going. <laughs> um, shit, I forget what I was going to say. <laughs> the connectivity between, like, you find these people that you... I'm trying to, like, elicit what you were trying to say. Oh, I was going to say. Oh. Okay, I got it. Is it the word elicit? Is that what is did it? The worst part about it is those aren't even memories you can recover because your brain at the time refused to make a memory. Right, they're gone. Yeah. They're just it's gone. It's just gone. And, oh, my God, that's fucking awful. Have you ever lost more than a day? Lost more than a day. Where it's like, I can't remember the last couple of days. Because I've had that before. And that's mean, really freaky. I mean... I've had to play detective on myself. Right. So I've never had that. I, yeah. I've never had that like immediacy. Like that idea that's like it's Wednesday and I don't remember Tuesday through Saturday. Yeah. Like I've never like had I've that. Like I've had to go, go through like credit card receipts. Oh, really? Oh, that's shit. interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's like, terrifying. What did, what did I do the past two days? Wow. Wow. Now, um, did, did you... You said manic. You're usually manic. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It was long periods of time, and I'm sure the sleep deprivation when you're manic does not help that. Oh, of course not. Because sleep is sleep is integral to the formation of memories. Right. Um, and, you know, when you're up for seven days straight. <laughs> Yikes. Know, yeah. Yikes. Um, your memory is not going to be great. And then you go into psychosis from the sleep deprivation. Whee! Yay! I love bipolar. <laughs> Uh, that's our. That's gonna be a trauma. A trauma scars first hit single. Yeah. I love bipolar. Uh, I love <laughs> bipolar. Uh, we have so many gifts. <laughs> One day we're gonna figure out what they are. It should be a death metal band. Death be metal like, band. <laughs> 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 
and you won't remember us. <laughs> so it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, that's sad. Um, you know, we've talked before about how uh, being manic is like doing Coke and Molly at the same time. <laughs> And then sometimes you take a roofie. Right. <laughs> God. It's like, it's just gone. You know what? You know what else is kind of fucked? I'm just thinking about this, right? Like, we don't remember stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But because of the digital age that we live in, everything's recorded. Everything's recorded. Yeah. You can go into a manic episode, do some crazy ass shit, and someone catches it all on film. Yeah. And now it's up on the internet forever. I saw a video uh, yesterday. Mm. I was looking at our TikTok account, and something came up. And uh, it was a guy approaching a security guard, and the security guard was getting belligerent with him. Oh. And the guy was like, man, no, I want to apologize. Last time I was here, I was experiencing an episode. I'm schizophrenic. Oh. And I had to get my, my medication upped. And I just wanted to apologize to you for what happened last time. Oh, wow. And I thought that was, that was just kind of like a fascinating moment. Yeah. Oh, God. And I bet you that schizophrenic episode was captured on video, too. Probably. Oh my god! So you kind of like see the whole, one. you see the whole full circle type of. That's yeah. a trip. Yeah. That's a trip because you go back and we've all had embarrassing moments in our childhood, right? That we were glad that social media wasn't a thing because you're like, oh, thank God that wasn't captured for yeah. all eternity. But f- kids today don't have that luxury, right? Yeah. And factor you add in the uh, uh, blackouts. God, man, that that the, you don't sucks. remember something, but a video of it's but being so, shared. But it's there, yeah. But yeah. it's there. It is. How weird must that feel? Oh my God, I don't. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if those. Are, wouldn't that be amazing if we could do like a security camera scan of us, like during? Like I know I don't remember June twenty fifth <laughs> through June twenty sixth, and I could like go yeah. and like you just see Brad like running up and down the Vegas Strip, be like, there I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, thank God that's something that's never happened, uh, but that's common with manic episodes is people just disappearing to another city. Yeah. Actually, you know, I say that, but I have done that before. I just remembered it. But like, imagine not remembering that. Imagine waking up in like, like a penthouse in Vegas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you're like, what? What? I can't afford a penthouse in Vegas. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Damn. Damn. Am I a whale now? I don't, yeah. I, I, I hate not remembering things because as storytellers and this is going to get artsy for a second and i apologize for it you can just put your hands over your ears for the next 20 seconds um as storytellers like stories come from the memories that we take in tangential leaps we often take from those memories strong emotional connections that we have like that's the basis of 90 percent of stories in the world right yeah. and we can't remember some that we've had. There might be a great story in my past that I don't remember or the opportunity for a powerful piece of art that you experienced that you just can't remember. Yeah. That's fucking heartbreaking. All the losses that the world's experience, because we've talked about how bipolar people, people with mental illnesses are often creative types, right? Mm-hmm. Which means bipolar people have forgotten more good ideas than they've probably ever had. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's that's true. That really hurts. Ouch. Damn it. Oh, this podcast got depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like this podcast anymore. <laughs> Those memory gap bullshit. Do memory gap. Hopefully I won't remember this. <laughs> no, we can't because it's being recorded. See? <laughs> That'd be great if if like a week from now we were looking on our dashboard on Spotify for podcasters and we're like, bipolar black. <laughs> when, did we, kind of... when did we do that? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Fucking meta as hell. Just a blackout during the blackout episode. Oh man. I kind of wish we did do that. <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> Fucking TikTok blowing up. Yeah. People like, look at these idiots. <laughs> and we could do a reaction video oh, to yeah. our plan. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that was stupid. Oh, we're stupid. No. Uh, Jesus I, Christ. I, I, I'm super curious, the people who are listening, your blackout experiences. Um, you don't have to get... Don't you don't have to get specific. This is not a place. It's not a, a venue for you to be like, hey, well, this time I killed a guy. Like, you don't have to do that. But... I'm curious to see who has experienced, like, Brad, multi-day blackouts, like, maybe difficulties remembering childhood, uh, relationships, um, and whether or not you can pinpoint that to a trauma you might have 
you know, um, uh, you might have experienced. Yeah. And, and has anybody else had to play detective on themselves or have you been told after one of these blackouts of something awful that yeah. you did that you do not remember? Yeah. Yeah. And, and what was the, the, the process you went through to discover that? And there's no judgment. Remember, there's no judgment on this show. We're really just curious yeah. of, of how you're dealing, how you might have dealt with it in the past or how you're currently dealing yeah. with it. We don't we don't place a moral value on the things you do while you're sick. No, because God, you're, no, because you're sick. Yeah, and there's symptoms of being sick. Yeah, and, and and the fact again that you're trying to help yourself goes a long way towards, you know, proof positive that just because you may have done some things that you regret in your life doesn't mean you're a bad person that you're not trying to make yourself better. Yeah, and it doesn't even again. I, it's a weird line. Because even the things you did, you did because you were sick. Right. Yeah, like, and, it, like if you puked on the school bus when you were in grade school because you had a fucking stomach bug mm-hmm. and you puked all over, you know, your friend or the bus driver. Nobody's going to be like, look at this mess you made. You're <laughs> such a pig. You're such a pig. Yeah. You're like, I'm sorry, I puked, you know? Yeah. It's just like, yeah. yeah, but you go out when you're bipolar and you're in a manic episode right. and you blow a bunch of money and sleep around. Yeah. People are going to be like, you fucking dirtbag. Yeah. And they shouldn't be yeah. because you're sick and it's a symptom. Can I tell a quick puke story? Yes. Okay, great. When I was in like... I Always. Think, oh, yes, I think I was in... <laughs> Fourth grade, and it was Valentine's Day. I remember this. Um, this is one of the memories I have. Great memory. Uh, Valentine's Day. And I remember it was my job to bring in, like, the boom box for the, the class party we were going to have. You know what I mean? And, like, the end of the day, it was a Valentine's Day party. And I had a cough. It wasn't, like, a serious, like, I wasn't sick. I was just kind of like, <clears throat> every once in a while. <laughs> but I had cough drops with me. And I remember being in class and being, like, I don't know why I put so much stock into being the one who brought in the radio, but I was always like, guys, I brought it. I'm like, I fucking brought in the radio. I'm the man, right? I had a cough. I took a cough drop. I happened to put the cough drop in my mouth as I was coughing, at which point I projectile vomited like, <laughs> all over the desk I was at. Like, it went, I, luckily, I wasn't sitting directly behind someone. It was like one of those weird, like, you were in like a square type of desk arrangement but I'm like uh-huh. Bleh. <laughs> oh why do I remember that but I can't remember some of the women that I've had relationships with because that's a trauma scar that's a trauma scar <laughs> 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 um, gross uh, I don't even know how we got there how did we get there puking yeah we get to puking yeah t- we were talking about oh, morality of being sick being sick yeah, there. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. the morality of being sick uh adam ruined valentine's day um yeah so please write in give us a voice memo um I, I, we're just curious we want we want to have these conversations I, you got to be able to talk about this shit you can't talking about the morality of it if you feel bad about it and you're not talking about it then you're not relating to anyone else, which yeah. means they're feeling bad about it and they're not talking about it. And we're all just stewing in our own crapulence. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you want to feel better and you want to help this community talk about it and laugh about it, some of this shit. Stu- I just talked about puking in my fourth grade Valentine's Day party. <laughs> I mean, it's stupid and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. No, not, not I, one bit. I, I doesn't like who cares? It in no way had an effect on my life in terms of like maybe I have a trauma scar from it, but it's not like I'm gonna go in for a job interview and you know a guy Brian who is in my class is gonna be like I remember you you puked on the bus and you were supposed to bring in the boombox. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fun story. I puked. I got sick. Uh, I think it was that kid Brian came down to the nurse's station because my mom came in and picked me up or whatever. And was uh-huh. Like Can we, we're gonna hold on to your boombox. <laughs> So that, that's our boombox until you come back to school. <laughs> and I remember being like, oh, man, they're just using me for a boombox. Did you ever get your boombox back? Yeah, it was like a week later. <laughs> and it was on radio stations I didn't listen to, which what? was not cool. Like country? No, no. It was like, I don't remember what it was at the time. Adult was, contemporary? <laughs> yeah, it was just a bunch of adult contemporary. Like, why, why is everybody listening to Christopher Cross? <laughs> is that why I'm not cool in grade school? <laughs> Damn it. everybody in grade school is listening to adult contemporary. <laughs> Fuck. 
<laughs> totally missed the boat on that. Uh, These seven year olds really into Richard Marx. <laughs> Oh my god, that's ridiculous! Oh, I love that. We're almost out of time, and yes. I have a good, I have a Richard Mark story. Damn. <laughs> well, we'll save that for the next. Yeah, one. yeah. Uh, <laughs> unless you black out and forget. <laughs> yeah, I probably will. Probably will. Probably will. Uh, thank you guys so much. We love you. Please write in, uh, follow us on social media, uh, share this podcast, get other people listening. It's good for the community. And write us at uh, Brad at batshit.com if you have a long email you want to send. Yeah, we love you guys. Mm-hmm.